So tell us about the move into China and how this is going. I hear that IMEX is quite big in China, actually. Yeah, as a matter of fact, the brand has a higher awareness than in the United States, and we do about 10 to 15 percent of the Chinese box office. But back to your initial question, um, the slowdown doesn't seem to have any impact on our business, and in a weird way, even a little bit positive. So um, in terms of the attendance versus our budget and on movies themselves, that's been right on course since all the uh, financial issues surfaced. Um, in terms of installs, which is putting up new IMAX theaters, again, right on schedule. And then the third thing is really new business activity, which you think if anything would suffer, that would be because you go into malls and multiplexes. But in fact, in, it, for reasons I don't quite understand, activity has picked up. And in fact, this morning we announced a 15 theater deal with Omnijoy, which is one of the bigger deals we've done in China. And over the last few weeks, we've announced another seven theaters that we signed. The only theory I have is maybe because it's consumer discretionary and movies are fairly recession proof, that rather than putting capital into export manufacturing, those kinds of things, people are putting money into more domestic consumption. And the movie industry has grown 35 percent compounded, as has IMAX for the last seven years, some, ten years, something like that. IMAX, domestically, are you missing a beat here, or is China just so, that much better? Um, we're not missing a beat. Fifteen, as you probably know, is a really good movie year, and still Bond and Star Wars and Hunger Games to come. So, no, it's doing fine here, but China is just a, a place that's taking off. China will pass the U.S. in terms of numbers of screens in 2017, and China's movie box office will pass the U.S. also in 2017. So it's just kind of a runaway market. Rich, uh, much of the money raised in this IPO is going to be used for a build-out in China, but you did, there was a bit of a secondary for you guys. You raised some money for IMAX. What do you use it for? You know, some of the... We were talking earlier today about where does, say, virtual reality fit in with the IMAX future? No, well, that's actually a good uh, speculation, Eric, because we are thinking of what to use it for, and something like virtual reality is right on point if we could find the right kind of investment, and we could also find something that could lever off our brand. But also, um, we've recently been buying in some stock. Um, you know, we are a, a company with a brand that's bigger than the, our product itself, so we're looking for the right acquisitions. And, you know, if we can't, we'll return it to shareholders. I mean, it's their money. It's not our money. Okay, we have to leave it there. Last question. Are we going to get to go, like, on an IMAX-sponsored Bloomberg Go viewing of Star Wars opening <laughs> night? I mean, I got three go. kids <laughs> on the spot. Maybe the second night, Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Almost had it. Between Rich, Rich Gelfond I mean, and John Stadzinski is getting the down. Down. Totally. Rich Gelfond, IMAX CEO. Thank you for joining us.